Riley Sai here. Today I want to talk about cladograms, but actually before I do that, I want to show you this. This is a family tree. Specifically, it's the family tree for the Greek myths. And boy, there's a lot of them. Um, the family tree shows who's related to who. Parents, children, aunts, uncles, all that stuff. To do that for species, kind of instead of a family tree, do a tree of life, a tree of species. You get something that looks like this. Now, this one is a fairly small cladogram. It shows sharks, fish, frogs, humans, uh, and some birds. And remember, birds are the leftover dinosaurs. Now, what it's showing here is how they're related. There should be an arrow on the left-hand side of this, and unfortunately there isn't one, that points from the bottom up showing the, pro the uh, passage of time. So down low is long, long ago, and at the top is present day. So the species at the top are the species we have now. And going up from the bottom, you see the first branching happens with the type of backbone. The shark has a backbone, but it's made out of cartilage. Then, after the bony backbone is developed, you can get regu regular fish. These are ray-finned fish. Then, four legs developed, tetrapods and all the anim all, all the uh, mammals you know are tetrapods but so are the amphibians the frog moving up there's a branch for mammals humans primates are on there and so are rabbits and other animals like dogs and cats and stuff like that and there's another branch there for eggs that have shells these are birds and alligators. They make, they lay an egg that has a shell. And with the bottom being ancient and the top being recent, you can see which happened first. Now, the red bars show when these different features, these different traits showed up. They don't actually show when, as in you know, 35 million years ago. They just show a relative order. We know that the backbone, the bony skeleton showed up before the amniotic egg. We can see that in the fossil record. So, by comparing the characteristics of various species, we can figure out how they're related. Now, it's important to notice that if, if you go to the shark, you might think that, well, the shark branched off a long, long time ago, and it was the shark all the way up. No. The shark is what we have now. A long time ago, it was something, a different species before we had those sharks. Same thing for frogs. You go to the top, there's the frog. It isn't a frog all the way down that line to where it branched off. Those are ancestors of 
frogs, previous species. Where the branching actually happens is where the most recent common ancestors are. So going down from the top, the most recent common ancestor between, say, ray finned fish and rabbits is here. This happened after the bony skeleton was developed. The most recent common ancestors for primates, and that's you and me, bud, and rabbits is here after hair developed, which is much more recent. Because it's the hair is more recent, primates are more closely related to rodents and rabbits than they are to crocodiles. You have to go back further to get to the join with that branch. So that's how the cladograms work. Oh, you will also see these drawn in different ways. Here's an ex example that shows the same information shown in four different ways. It's the same thing. It's just whether you're using straight lines or diagonal lines or are you rotating it or whatever, but it's all still the same. So this kind of a drawing, a cladogram, shows how species are related. Close, far, there, it's like a family tree for life. And in fact, that you can have very, very complex ones that go back hundreds of millions of years. And those get very complicated, huge numbers of branches. And you can find these kind of things online. Just go take a look. So this is a little bit beyond genetics. This is how species are related. Thanks. Riley Syab.